Buckle up, Buttercup, because Xorg just got forked. And a big fork. Not some little fork. Not some fly-by-night pansy fork. But a fork by one of the, if not the most active developer in terms of contributing patches and commits to the Xorg X server over the last year. I mean, this is serious, real forkage. Not just that, but they've got a new release planned just a couple of weeks away with massive new features and a commitment to no diversity, equity, and inclusion. They're going politics free and discrimination free. This is, oh, I am super psyched about this. All right, I, I just posted this news uh, over on X. I'm going to read it to you now so that you get all the direct quotes and then I've got a whole bunch more stuff I want to add. Holy smokes, got an exclusive story here that is a big one for Linux users. Yeah, that's right. The Lunduke Journal broke this story. <laughs> just, just saying. Xorg is being forked by the most active Xorg developer with a first release planned for later this month. And based on the tentative release notes, which the Lunduke Journal got a sneak peek at, this looks to be the most significant release of Xorg in years, possibly well over a decade well over a decade. Uh, importantly, and this is really critical here, this is not some fly-by-night fork, right? This fork named X Libre, Libre, is being spearheaded by Enrico, and I'm gonna pronounce your name wrong, Enrico, Enrico Wiegelt, Wiegelt? I'm sorry, I think it's a German name, Wiegelt, W-E-I-G-E-L-T, Gelt, Gelt I get, Gelt, Wiegelt, Wiegelt, something like that, uh, who was, but Enrico, I can say Enrico, Enrico was responsible for roughly 63% of the commits to the Xorg source, source code repository in 2024, right? So over half of all the commits that came into Xorg last year were from Enrico. And he's the guy spearheading this thing. So basically, if you were to choose a person that clearly has a driving passion for Xorg, for an open source X11 server, it would be Enrico. You'd want, you'd want him being at least involved in whatever Xorg fork you have. Him driving it is phenomenal. So this is the real deal. The Lunduk Journal spoke to Enrico Wiegelt, I'm assuming, uh, to get some additional details. I'm just going to read some of his quotes to you now so you can make up your own mind what you think about all this. Quote, For a while, we had hoped to get an actual Xorg release, but that's not going to happen anymore, so I'm finally going for a full fork. He continues, This fork, ex libre, became necessary because it's the expressed wish of the current Xorg group majority to abandon the project, let it rot forever, and block any substantial contributions, let alone new features. I'm leaving it to the reader to deduce which corporate interests are behind that, and instead, just moving on. Ooh, that's spicy. Uh, so basically what he's saying here is there's corporate interests and power putting their thumbs on things and for whatever reason <laughs> and a lot of you can read between lines here uh there's a few words out there that i think you're cherry picking right now uh uh the people running things within xorg uh, i've just decided you know what we're just gonna let xorg slowly die okay uh, Enrico de described uh, the huge number of commits to Xorg, which have been simply waiting for release. They've just been waiting for a release. There's been huge numbers of them. In some cases, these commits have been waiting for Xorg to have a release for years now. And those changes will finally see the light of day with this Ex Libre fork. Uh, he continues, first of all, it's the first major X server release since four years. Uh, about 3,000 commits waited for release and hundreds of open merge requests that are shadow banned by the corporate Linux moles. Uh, he said a company name there when he spoke to me. Uh, I censored it as corporate Linux because he seems to be kind of wanting to, to, to go along with uh, letting everyone read between the lines there. And you know what? I'm going to let him do that. 
because I've got another follow-up story that's coming along with this that dovetails in with that nicely, and we'll be talking about specifically which company we're talking about very soon there. Uh, some of the bigger changes included in this first release of Ex Libre. Uh, the first is a uh, an X namespace extension, a novel approach for isolating clients from different security domains, containers, into separate X11 namespaces where they can't hurt each other for cases where X security, which was developed back in, released back in 1996, isn't sufficient. It's actually, that's actually a pretty big deal for a lot of people. Uh, X Nest was ported to XCB, uh, which means no more dependencies on the old X lib anymore. Um, per ABI driver directories allows distros installing multiple ABIs at the same time for smoother upgrades and just a lot of cleaning up a huge amount of technical debt. Anyone who has been following the saga of Xorg and, and why a lot of people are putting their emphasis behind the Wayland display server and all these different things over the last few years, one of the big arguments for just abandoning Xorg is technical debt. It's been around a long time and oh, people don't want to work on it. And, oh, we've got to give up on it because there's so much technical debt. Well, now we've got a mountain of commits cleaning up a lot of that technical debt, and it's finally going to see the light of day with an actual release. It's amazing. Uh, the Ex Libre project also says they aim to remedy some of the organizational and discrimination issues which have plagued Xorg in recent years, specifically noting that all people are welcome to contribute to Ex Libre regardless of their political views. This is a very, very big deal. Uh, the various things within the free desktop organization, which Xorg is part of, have been having difficulties with not just, you know, free speech issues, but significant discrimination of people based on their political views. Um, uh, many people will remember uh, the, the Hyperland developer was banned from contributing to, to free desktop projects because some of the people within free desktop who were all Red Hat employees, uh-oh, I said a name, uh, <laughs> were, were not fans of his perceived politics, etc. And so this has become a real issue where significant portions, and this is hitting the whole, the whole open source world, where significant portions of really key projects, and Xorg is not alone in this, are being discriminated against and just split down the middle. Right. Uh, if people are being banned from contributing in a lot, a lot of cases, we're talking about people who were longtime contributors. We're talking about people who were core maintainers. We're seeing this on the Linux kernel project where they're banning people based on politics or country of origin and a lot of other things. We're seeing this in GNOME. We're seeing this in the free desktop projects. And so when Ex Libre comes out and says, you know what? Anyone's welcome. You just come and we're working on a piece of cool software. It doesn't matter what your politics are. You can work on it. Uh, they have a specific, a specific quote here I want to read for all of you. You make up your own mind what this means. It doesn't matter which country you're from, your political views, your race, your sex, your age, your food menu, whether you wear boots or heels, whether you're furry or fairy, Conan or McKay, comic character or, small, or, or a small furry creature from Alpha Centauri, or just a boring average person. Anybody's welcome who's interested in bringing X forward, end quote. Love it. Love it. That, that to me is old school hackery. That's old school nerd programmeriness, right? It doesn't matter. We can all, we can disagree on a mountain of things and we will, we always will. We're nerds, man. Nerds to argue and disagree with stuff, but on stuff, but we can get past that and just focus on the thing that we're working on. We're working on a robotics project. We focus on the cool robots. We can leave politics for when we're, I don't know, grabbing a burger later. If we're building a cool X11 open source server implementation, we focus on that when we're there working on that. We don't need to, to ban people because we don't like who they voted for. It's nonsense. So I love this. Absolutely love this. I also love what this potentially means for Linux distributions. I mean, if you think about it, we now have the potentiality of a non-DEI, anti-DEI, non-woke X server. 
put that on top of a of an otherwise non woke non DEI Linux distribution, and oh baby, <laughs> you sprecking my Deutsch. I'm loving it. All right, let me continue here. Uh, the London Journal will be keeping a close eye on Ex Libre as it gets closer to their first planned release, which a currently is scheduled for later in June, so later this month. While many Linux distributions have moved to Wayland as an Xorg replacement, ugh, there remains a large majority of software which is reliant on Xorg and many users who prefer it over Wayland for a variety of reasons and use cases. We're talking practical use cases here. As such, it is reassuring to see a viable fork of Xorg by an established prominent developer this, this is this is a pretty big deal this is a pretty friggin big deal um and when when enrico uh, was talking about this he made mention repeatedly that there really wasn't another option here if 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 x org was going to continue at all it just simply needed to be forked and i so i started looking around and and a, a few links got sent over to me and the more I looked into it, the more I realized that Enrico really has been pushing to get Xorg to do releases, to really merge in some significant changes for quite some time now. So not only has he been responsible for 60 plus percent of all the commits, uh, but he's been pushing to get this going, to get it, as he says, um, uh, I'm just doing uh, most of the work here in order to get X11 back on track again, to which the prominent leadership behind Xorg tends to be replying with, no, you don't. Um, this quote from uh, from uh, Michael, Michael Donzer, Donze, I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name too. I can't pronounce any name, so don't take it personally. Uh, replied with, if you really believe that, if you really believe X11 can get back on track, you're delusional. So that's the people running Xorg are saying flat out, nah, you, you can't get Xorg back on track. You can't release new open source X11 servers. That's it's done. It's done. They just aren't going to do that anymore. And that's the people running that stuff. And so he's been trying to do this. So um, uh, so uh, he posted this. Uh, Enrico posted a, a bug issue here. Issue uh, 1757 entitled Simple Merge Requests uh, Asking for Attention from Enrico Wigelt, a uh, collection of relatively simple merge requests that are waiting for attention, and uh, just a list here of, of a whole bunch of them. I'm just going to scroll down. Oh, let's see. We're up to, there's 152 of them right there um, in X Server Master, and it keeps going. Uh, then there's X Server Maintenance 1, um, uh, X386 Input and Lib Input, uh, uh, just on and on and on. And there's just so many of these that are, you know, bug fixes, um, um, security patch updates to, to make things a little more secure, uh, adding new features. Clean, a lot of it is cleaning up technical debt, right? C cleaning the code base up a little bit. And just, no, we're just not going to, they're just not going to do that. They're just, they're just going to ignore that entirely. And when that's, when a project's at that case where the project is just like, forget it, we're abandoning it. And, and that's really heavily driven by the corporate overlords at one particular company that I only accidentally said the name of earlier once, um, you, you don't really have a choice. You have to fork if you want to continue the project. And so that's where we're at now. The X Libre X server. Um, uh, here's a screenshot of the readme file, um, which people are going to see more of in the weeks ahead. Uh, the project has not publicly, um, unveiled the link to everyone for where their, their permanent source repository is and website and all that sort of thing. This is all, uh, sneak behind the curtain stuff that you're getting right now. Uh, it, it, but the readme file says this, and who knows if it'll still say this come release date, but this is what it says now. Uh, quote, uh, this fork was necessary since toxic elements within Xorg projects, moles from certain big corporations are boycotting any substantial work on Xorg in order to destroy the project to eliminate competition of their own products, classic embrace extend extinguish tactics. This is an independent project, not at all affiliated with big tech. 
or any of their subsidiaries or tax evasion tools, nor any political activist groups, state actors, etc. It's explicitly free of any DEI or similar discriminatory policies. Anybody who's treating others nicely is welcomed. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to be keeping close tabs on all of this because honestly, I've got a lot of questions. A whole lot of questions, and I'm sure you do too. But this is exciting. In, for me, I love the idea of someone continuing X11 work and bringing the X server forward. Not just maintaining it, but making it better, improving it. But that, that really does beg the question, though, is what, the, what will the reception be? At a time when many people are, being, are very reluctant to move to Wayland... Uh, many people are excited to move to Wayland, but many other people are very reluctant to move to Wayland. And that, that's not just users, but, but whole Linux distributions themselves, as well as software developers who with their software isn't working all that well on Wayland. There's, there's a bit of that still and would prefer to just stick with, with Xorg. So will, will Linux distributions that are out there that are continuing to be non Waylandy, will they pick up X Libre instead of Xorg? And how will, how will the free desktop organization and the Xorg project respond to this? It will be interesting to see how they decide to respond. Um, I'm going to be watching it all very closely. Uh, but I tell you what, I have not installed this yet. Um, I, I do have I, I do have all the links to all the source code repositories and everything. I'm going to wait until they have uh, a, a semi-official build ready. Uh, my understanding is sometime later in June, there will be a release that they have. Um, I think they're going to call it a beta release since there are so many changes, um, but uh, it's coming out uh, later this month. I'm going to grab it, uh, load it up on my my one of my various Linux laptops and, and take it for a test drive. Um, I'm kind of excited to do so because it's, it's the first time when it feels like some of that core technology that's been powering Linux, the, the X server, finally has a future again. And that's an exciting thing. I, I think that's a really exciting thing. Um, and personally, I think a lot of people will, will begin arguing about this from the X org versus Wayland argument. That, that, that's going to come up a bit. And I think that's silly. Uh, I think I think they're, they're, they're distinctly different types of display servers, and I, I think there's plenty of room for both to exist for their own purposes. I'm more of an X server kind of guy. I like the architecture of X server more than I like the architecture of Wayland. That doesn't mean Wayland is awful or bad. I just it's what I prefer. And that might just be because I'm an old fuddy-duddy. Right. It might be just be the, the gray in my beard that's convincing me that that uh, I prefer the old uh, the X Windows system style a bit more. Maybe. But I still like that it's there. I like that we have the option and it's absolutely fantastic. So thank you to everyone who's who's working on this. Thank you to Enrico for spearheading this and moving this forward. It is um, it's a tremendously good idea. And I think the right people are involved with it right now. And that is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, thank you to all of the Lunduk Journal subscribers for allowing me to do this sort of work. Uh, thank you to uh, all the folks who are interested in Ex Libre and, and Enrico for reaching out to me and making sure that this gets out there because people need to know about this because it's extremely, extremely cool. Uh, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, go to Lunduk.com. That's my website. <laughs> Lunduke.com and click on some links. Um, but don't worry about it. I will be covering this again when release time comes around. Uh, so when they're when they're uh, undoing their flashy unveiling, because this isn't even them doing an announcement. They just talk to me about it, and I'm like, please, can I tell everyone about it? And they're like, all right. <laughs> So I, so I am. Um, but when they do their big announcement, uh, which I, I, I expect in the coming weeks, I, I will, of course, be talking about it again because it's cool. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare oh, end broadcast. <laughs>